is the 183rd episode of Cloud Focus Weekly for the third, maybe third or fourth week of July 2014. This episode is titled Productivity Tools and Tips. Cloud Focus Weekly is brought to you by Compliance Locker by Arcus. Capture all chatter posts, deletions, and files available for free on the App Exchange. Take it for a spin at compliance-locker.com. I'm your host, Jason Howard, and joining me with co-host for 183 times in a row, Justin Edelstein. Justin, how are you doing today? 183 times in a row, fourth week of July, in case you were wondering. Is it the fourth week? It sure is. Alrighty then. Well, it's what happens when, I don't know, the doc doesn't get up to It's a long week. Uh, I will say, we some very exciting Safe Harbor news. We just came up with our new product. Oh, we did. Yeah, we just yeah. we just ideated we sat it here and did it, and so much thought was put so into it. So much thought. It was so thoughtful. Logos will happen. Well, no, no, no. Let's be clear. What we thought of was the name of the product. Oh yeah, the name and the logo and the logos. We did the marketing stuff. Yes, all the other stuff. And like has five minutes on the over the last board. couple of weeks, but. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, that I was happened. I was thinking that because we were I was reading off the compliance locker, which we love. It's a great app, but you know, like can't well, wait to read about this new one. Can't read. Can't read to talk about the new one, which and we are now Harbor targeting Dreamforce. We're targeting Dreamforce, and it'll also be free. Yes, it will be our third free app. Speaking of Dreamforce, before we get into our big topic of the week, uh, if you are registering for Dreamforce and the price keeps going up, 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 you can take a hundred dollars off 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 by using the code ec14 arcus and that's like a hundred dollars off your uh, registration for dreamforce dreamforce is gonna be crazy gonna be a lot of uh fun stuff i'm really looking forward to it um especially now that we might have a new product to show and to demo which will be kind of fun yeah so we are not going to talk about our blog this week yeah because you wrote it and it stinks oh, oh. my are you serious? Uh, no, I'm not serious. So we are not going to talk I about it. I thought it was a good blog post. It was good. But we're not going to talk about it because we're going to – we have a – this is our special episode. In oh, special right. episodes, we just do – we go into one special things. So um, this week I thought – actually, this was uh, – I was listening to another podcast that went deep into one of the things we're going to talk about. And I thought, oh, it would be fun if we kind of went over the, some of the productivity tools and tips we use – in and around the operating system or what we do. I will first of all say, and this is, although I guess nowadays it's not as bad as it used to be, this is going to be a little bit Mac specific. Pretty much Mac specific um, in terms of the tools. Now, there are other tools like That's them. That's because we use Mac. Yeah. Mac computers. You, you had to touch it in order to say it. I needed he, to. We went, he I had to it a little literally touch love it. Love tap. Um, so it is going to be pretty Mac specific. We apologize in advance a little bit, but not really. Um, so we're going to talk about, and, and again, not just sort of not pick of the week, and there's going to be no pick of the week because these are kind of all of our picks, um, although I had a really good one sitting right here. which You I've, can pick it next week. Okay, I can pick it next week. Um, but I think, but I really want to talk about how we use it, like some real defining examples or unique examples where people might be like, ooh, I know of that tool. I never thought of using it that way. Yeah. So... Um, Let's get into them. Let's get into it. I think we should leave that one to the last. That one last? Yes, because it's kind of the best one. All right, so let's let's leave that one last. Right. So let's so let's do <laughs> <laughs> which one you might be asking. Yeah. So the first one I want to make. So I wait, these talk. are productivity tools we love, and yes. then we're gonna have quick hitters at the end, like easy stuff that everyone should already be using. Yes, you should already be using. Right. But I'm gonna start with this one. Um, that one. So you're telling people on the on yes that are listening that is right. the one. You're, okay, yeah. good. So there is a tool, and this is a freebie. Uh, there is a tool in uh, it installs with OS X, um, Mavericks, whatever the newest version. It's been around for years, but the tool has just gotten better and better and better. It's free and it does so much stuff. I want to talk about one specific use case, which if you don't know about, this will save hundreds and hundreds of hours of your time. The app is called Preview. Do you know this tool? Of course. Yes. So there's no like Adobe Acrobat on right. your Mac, is there? Um, there probably is somewhere because I've installed it. But Preview basically started as an app that would open up like uh, JPEGs and GIFs. 
but over the years it got into opening up uh, PDFs. Okay, so it's an app. It's just very fast. It's very light. Um, you can find it on your Mac. Neat, right? So you can open up and view preview things. That's right. what they use the default it can to preview. Open stuff. It can open stuff. But it's got a couple things that make it super, super, super awesome. Okay. Um, the first is annotation. As you know, because you work with me. I am the recipient of many an annotated um, image. So one of the great things about it is when you use Preview, you can um, click on this little icon on the top that then allows you to annotate the document. And this can be a, a PDF or a uh, JPEG. So what I, my favorite thing to do, and this I do this with clients all the time. I call this getting red arrowed. Red arrowed, yeah. Is where I'll take a screenshot, right? So I'll hit uh, Shift Command Four, which allows me to take a section screenshot, right? And that drops to my desktop, and then I double click on it, open up in Preview, and then I hit Shift Command I, which opens up this little inspector, and it gives me the red arrow tool, where I can then just drag red arrows all over the JPEG, pointing things out. You don't want to be red arrow. Well, but I'll tell you, it's useful for people. So for you, Salesforce people. It's a great way. You just you screenshot the Salesforce screen like in somewhere in setup, and then you show them red arrow setup up in this corner here, menu item here, and you literally in one screen you can explain an entire set of navigation without having to say how to go to it. Yeah. It's so much quicker. You can also add other types of annotations, so you can block things off with um, in circles or yep. ovals and rectangles. Yep. You can also write. Or like type in text. So yep. click here first. Click here second. Why is this here? That kind of stuff. Yep. It's 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 an awesome awesome tool. So that's like it's number one. Why like, do we like, love it so much? So huh? like what's what's this big super? Well, there's time two saver? two other things I want to say that that about two. preview. Yes. Okay. The second is that you can merge and split PDFs. Yes, you can. Which is amazing. Yes. So you can sort of save as, well, that's splitting, but merging, you can actually have two PDFs together and merge them back together, sort of create the pages this constantly. And, and rearrange the pages of a PDF. So like another great feature of this app, you can actually, you know, you get two PDFs and you, or you get a PDF and you want to rearrange the pages. Again, a lot of the times I'm getting a PDF because I'm printing something as a PDF and that's a huge time saver. So I don't, I save everything in PDF in my life now. I'll talk about one of my other tips at the end, but um, and I, if I have to rearrange pages, whatever, I save as a PDF, um, and you can rearrange in Preview. So the last one is the most awesomest of awesome. It is tips. pretty awesome. This I is... love me some electronic signing of documents. Yeah. So you, this has been around for a while, and um, it's actually been in the app for I think a couple of years. I think it was the previous operating system. I think that it was it two was ago, maybe. In. So there's an app. So you go into that same place in the app where you can sort of annotate, and there's a little little sign that says SIG, S I G, and you say, "Oh, so that's cool." You can click on it, and then basically it will seek out lines, right? And it'll highlight it, and you right. click on it, and it'll drop your signature. Any horizontal line right. on the image or document that you have open it'll drop your signature in and and the question is how do you how get your does signature? It know my signature oh the best part so there's a way to put your signature in and i think you go into i think it's preferences signatures and you hit the plus and what it does is it opens up your video camera and so you draw your signature on a piece of paper and you hold it up to this to the camera and it takes a shot of it and then puts it inside a preview so not only is this awesome 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 you can do I have multiple signatures. I have my signature, but also have my initials. So then, you know, on a paper you get, you want to initialize things. So I'll give you an example. Uh, a good friend of Salesforce sent up something that we need to sign the other day. And I literally sent as a Word doc. I save print as PDF to my desktop, open up in preview, drag the signature on it, throw a date on it with the date with the thing, hit save, and send it back to him. He's like, thanks. Like he couldn't imagine how fast I. I send them a signed piece of paper. So I did I, this um, for me as the as the big one that saves me tons of time is um, filling out those insurance forms, the fifteen hundred forms, the yep. red ones. Yep. That usually you print and then you write your name and your insurance number and and all that. I have one saved with all of my information already typed into it using just using Preview. Right. And then 
um, my signature is also saved on it. And the only thing I ever have to do uh, when I print it is just write the date. That's it. Awesome. I just put a date on it. Awesome. So I saved myself tons of time filling out insurance forms, which is just, uh, I just never, um, you know, found the reason why I had to actually like print print that thing yes. out and I'll save the paper. Like, I mean, the other thing is you print it out just to scan well, it back to, in. No, you have oh, to this, send, you have to it, send in. it in. Oh, you have to print it, but like printing it blank. Like I never understood why the insurance companies couldn't figure out, like, you know who I am when I'm signed into this thing. Right. I'm getting the form from your website. Just fill it out for me. No, they need conga. Um, all right, so preview is awesome. There's so many other features in preview. It, it literally can do a bunch. It's what's going to be in the next operating system, the ability to allow you to annotate in line in email, and then my red, my red arrows are going to go crazy. So that's going to drive everybody crazy. Um, I don't know this next tool. So this next tool, you need to get to know this. So if I've not already picked this on some episodes, it's probably – so this is, this is how I know this is a good tool. It's dock-worthy. I mean this – so – the only the tools that sit in my dock are the most important tools on the planet. Oh, yeah. It's dock it's worthy. Dock. Okay. This sits in my tool in my dock. So it is called TextMate. It is actually a free thing, free uh, uh, whatever app. So here's the, what's awesome about TextMate. Mm-hmm. It is free. Mm-hmm. It is very, very fast. You click on TextMate and open it up, and it's open in like a nanosecond. Okay. But what it is is a text reader. So there's text edit, which comes with with – safari or comes with the mac and i'm sure there's a million others but this is like i guess for people on the windows side who like use notepad plus plus or something like this is the equivalent it is extremely powerful and it has every little bell and whistle you want in it i'll tell you a couple that are amazing with it first is i use it all the time for log files because when i get a huge or massive log file i can just drag it into this and open it up and then quickly find and replace things or find things. So like if I need to format the log file so I can read it, you know, I might find and replace huge sets of gap and just find replace and it'll do over a you know 120 megabyte file within seconds. The second and even most the more important is it has a feature that'll let you find in files. So you can say give so like let's say you have a, like 30 files all with you're know, trying to find the word JSON in them. Right? So you can literally say find in files and he says where do you want me to find it you just point to a directory and then it opens up each one and we'll search for it and then we'll show you line by line where it is in a little preview screen that you can click on and open it up and throw you right to where that thing is oh. it's it is again it's the thing i have it defaulting to everything whenever i get a log file whenever i get anything i use textmate i open it up it is unbelievable um i think they're on textmate 2 um and I, yeah, I'm on the TextMate 2 alpha version. It is the most stable, wonderful thing. It's got, and then it's got like a billion dollars. It's got bundles. It can do highlighting if you're opening XML versus HTML. I'm not even talking about that. I just use it as a text editor. Another, re, another use case for it, when you, you know when you're copying text from one place to another, and like you copy it from like an email and you throw it into a Google Doc or from an Excel spreadsheet and you throw it into a Google Doc and it looks like doo-doo. You know that, how like it formats? Oh, up. yeah. yeah. Like it has the... Right, because, HTML stuff because in somehow it. they're they're not trans. Yeah, I right. drop it into TextMate on the way there, so I'll I'll copy it from Excel, throw it into TextMate, and then drop it in, and then copy it from there because it kind of makes it text at that point, mm-hmm. and then drop it in the next place, mm. and then it comes out formatted well. So mm. TextMate, unbelievable tool. I again, dock worthy. Of all these tools, this is the only one sitting in my dock. Interesting. So, yeah. Um. Next one, you could. Do you use the next one? This is sort um, of not. This is not a tool. Was like not, a couple tips on the tool. Not really. I I don't. I don't do this a lot. Um, hmm. you want, you know, maybe I'll tell you how, how you. Uh... Maybe I mean probably not. It, it's not something that I do. But I mean, you're you're using. You're talking about Safari, which is the right. standard Mac OS X browser. I guess it's a standard Apple browser because it's the standard iOS and Mac browser. And you're talking about specific feature, read it later. Um, Yeah, two features that I I really... So I've never really gotten into read it later. So here's why I like read it later. And this really stems from from other places. Read it later is a feature of Safari that allows you to sort of 
bookmark stuff in the future. Yeah, I'm look. I'm in Safari, so I'm like kind of following along a little. So it's bit. on the side. It's that little thing, and there's if you open up the side, like it looks like bookmarks. A little bookmark deal. And then there's three of them. Show side bookmarks, bar. reading list, and shared links. Yeah, I see that. Well, so reading list is reading later. Here's I have some stuff in there actually. There's four things in there. Um, I must use this at some point. This so here's what this is really cool. So what I do is I'm reading things on in Safari on my iPad. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to remember this or go do something. Maybe it's like I need something to purchase or I want to think about it. So I'll just click. And it's anywhere in Safari. There's a little thing that says, you know, like a little icon. You click it and it says add to read it later. First of all, it actually makes it download. It actually downloads it, so you can actually read this offline. So you could throw articles into read it later and then read it on a plane without Wi-Fi. Hmm. So that's a neat feature of it. That's a good feature. But it also syncs across your multiple devices. So mm-hmm. if you're on your iPhone, you hit read it later. Then the next time you're on your Safari, you go to that list. It's sitting there for you. Mm-hmm. So here's how I use this. First, I bookmark a bunch of quotes pages that I use because I put quotes into our, our Scrum, our weekly Scrum. So I, I have them all there because I don't really bookmark them. I have them I read it later. But if I'm ever interested in something or I'm reading something in Zeit maybe in the morning and I'm like, you know, I want to read this. I want to read this later. I'll mark it. And then part of my thing during the week is I go through and I just make sure there's anything in there that I left for myself. Sometimes it's a cool toy that I saw somewhere that I want to. But what's nice is I go back and I like two days later, I'm like, ooh, is that something I actually still want to buy? Or is that something I was just interested in for four seconds? Maybe I want to forward it to somebody. So it's read it later. It's a great feature. The best part of it is it just syncs across all platforms. So then it's always available and you can kind of get to it. So it's kind of like bookmarking it, but not without the commitment. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I mean, Chrome has the, you know, the, you're logged into Chrome, so it has all your stuff yes. on all the different devices. So there's a similar feature. I don't know if there's a, it, this thing actually takes it so you can read it anywhere. Right. I, don't, I think that's more of a bookmarking thing. But anyway, it's a great feature. And what's nice is a lot of apps, third party apps, allow you to throw things in to read it later. So like you're on somewhere and you can throw it there and then just kind of come back to it. So, mm-hmm. The second one is my third, my most favorite, and I use this a thousand trillion times a day. It's a very simple little trick, but in Safari, if you have bookmarks up on your bookmark bar, yep, I right, use this trick. The first, whatever, the first ten or so, I guess, they're all available under Command, the Command key. So if you Command one will bring up the first one in the order. The command two will bring up the second one. The Command three will bring up the third one. So I have in that list, I have like the five places I go to. 300 million times a day. The first one is Google Docs, my starred in Google Docs. So I hit Command 1, it brings me right there. Command 2 brings me to WebEx, because that's where I go constantly. 3 brings me to my personal password doc in, in Google Docs, so I can log into things. Mm-hmm. Uh, 4 now brings me to pictures from my daughter's camp, because <laughs> that's where I'm going now, because to check for her pictures. And I don't know, I think where it keeps going, five or six, whatever. So really cool. And this works in all browsers. So this is in, in Chrome too. I think it'll always pick the first one. If you do Command 1, Command 2, Command 3, Command 4. So if you're always constantly going to someplace, you can either make it your start page. But I don't like when things load when I start up my browser because I'm usually going somewhere else. But I love this as an easy way to get into it. So it's you hit the Command key and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and it'll bring the first four of your bookmark in your bookmark bar. So while we're talking about browsers. Yes. Does Safari have the notion of pinning a tab the way that Chrome does? Because I love pinned tabs. It makes them much smaller, and then uh, they just stay. That's a great feature. It's a, very it's good a tip. great, great feature in Chrome. Because yep. I always have the same like three things just to constantly open in Chrome. And then, so I pin them. And yep. they go to the left, and they stay to the left, and they're the first three tabs. And they're always there for you whenever you need to get to them. They're just those first three, and they're smaller. They're a little iconized, um, and they're really easy to get back to. You know, it's a nice feature. That is a great, great feature. Um, I think since we want to get and spend most of our time on uh, on the big one that we think is probably the most productivity tool I've ever used in my life. Seriously, so let's we have, just we have a limited amount of time. Let's dig into the big puppy. Um, I'm gonna. Well, I guess we'll put these down into the into the, put many, them in the many quick things. hitters. I'll put them in the quick hitters at the at the very end. I'm actually opening this. The app's always open, but I'm opening it so that I can. You can um, talk about it. Talk about my. So you, the type of things you do. The ones yeah. that I, I think are the best. All right. So 
we have talked about this tool before. It is one of the greatest tools ever on the planet. It is Text Expander. It is one of those things that I heard someone talk about. I think it was Merlin, Merlin Mann, productivity guy, mm-hmm. not book writer, um, who he must have talked about this forever. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It, you know, it, it, it takes things and expands them. It takes things, expands them. You write little snippets, like how it, you know, such a pain. Once you get into using Text Expander, or again, there's many versions of it. I know there's Windows version, so you can input your Text Expander thing. All it does is as you're writing out something on your operating system, anywhere in your operating system, and you're writing out little words, it can take, it's constantly looking at what you're writing, and then it's waiting for basically a stop, like a space, and then it evaluates it. And if it matches against something it's supposed to expand, it takes that and expands it out to something you know, something bigger, so Correct. more text. So I'm going to give the very simplest example, the one that I use 9,000 times a day. Let's just give a number of examples. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to give the simple one, then we can go how, right. how you can go deep on it. Go ahead. So TG, TJMA. TJMA. Right. I write TJ, which is it's not a word, so it's not right. whatever. It's thanks, JMA, and it, it will then expand out thanks, comma, space, next line, JMA, which is the way I answer emails. It's your signature. It's my, it's, yeah, it's the way I put at the end of emails when I'm, you know, writing emails to gotcha. somebody. So a very, very easy one. I use that a billion times a day. But it's much more advanced than that. So we want to get into, like, the deeper ones you can do yeah. or give some examples. So give me a couple examples of the ones you use. So uh, have a lot of the, the ones I ones. use, like, the most uh, is one called J-E-G-T-M. J-E-G-T-M? Correct. Can you J-E- guess what my little codes are? Yeah. Wait, wait. J-E, Justin Elstein, G-T-M, go-to meeting. That's right. So go. that is my Justin's recurring go-to meeting, which never ends. It's an all-day event. It just never ends. Yep. And whenever I need to do a meeting invite, I just, in the description, say J-E-G-T-M, and boom, up pops an enormous snippet of text with the go-to meeting link, the dial-in, the access pin, the mobile dial in yes. everything that I've I've put in for joining a go-to meeting. As long as I just type in those five simple um, character strokes in that order, will um, will go ahead and pop up. So mine, of course, is WBX WebEx. WebEx pops my WebEx thing, and then for the conference, I do I have two yep. CCN one which brings up one of my conference lines, mm-hmm. which is our sort of like more corporate line. It's mm-hmm. very snazzy. It says, welcome to the Arcus conference line. Mm-hmm. And then CCN2, which brings up my reoccurring go-to meeting conference line, which okay. is always a great. So those are so on those level. All right, let me give you one. Oh, well, come we're on. going back and forth. You no, just no, gave no, you me just, one. You, you just oh, gave, all right. you, ahead, give yeah, me one. All right. Um, so my, uh, well, I'll give you the one that I know that, that you, you want to talk about. Um, which is? Uh, N U N U S E T U. That's mine. Yeah. N U setup. N U setup. So this one's a little advanced because it has a fill in it. Yeah. So this is the like go go to the next level. So not only can they have pre done text, and they can be long text, it can be formatted text. This one has a is a preset of text, but then you can create a fill, meaning it pops up in advance and says, what do you want to put into this one spot in it before you submit it? Right. So like in this one, I use NU at setup, and then it pops a list, one, log into Salesforce, two, in the top right screen. It's the instructions of how to add a new user. Right. So, but at the seventh step, it says, enter my username as, and it always gives, and I have it set because I put in a different domain every time because I Correct. can't use the same domain because right, it's being copied. Um, and so I put in whatever, and it has a little thing in it that tells me what I'm supposed to be putting there, like that I put in. Mm-hmm. I hit OK, and then it pops that in right into the email or wherever you want it. Yep. And you set up unbelievably. It's a uh, good one. It's a good one. I have another one along those lines. Give me another one. Comma, org ID. So comma, O-R-G ID. I'll see if it works on mine. Nope. <laughs> five, five steps to tell somebody how to get Ooh. their org ID to tell me what it is. Ship that to me. I want that one. That's I'll a, give you that that's one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's one like that you just use all the time. Uh, let's see. I have another one. Um, it's called Intro LS. Oh, that means the I-N-T-R-O-L-S, send over to. I-N-T-R-O-L-S, yeah. which is if someone emails me about an inquiry about Arcus, 
I this is my soft introduction to the partner who shall remain nameless. Who has initials, initials are LS. Are LS. It's the, I've CC'd my partner and he will get back to you. It's like a two line thing about me sort of kicking so it over to him. Even more advanced, the one I use a lot and I'll use today when I publish this is I use a CFP, CFWP. So you don't have to remember these all, by the way. There right. is like a menu yeah. that you can just hit and just click on the one that you right. want. So you don't actually have to remember this all your little codes. This one has three fills and is HTML. So it fills out all of the Cloud Focus Weekly stuff for nice. me. And all in HTML. Even And it puts it, it has dynamic stuff in it. So it always puts the date of the podcast, which is the date that I'm doing it. Right. So then I it's like pre fill That's the other thing about them. They can fill in things. For you, right. like date and time. So I have a couple. Date, I think time. D date. So those are my two most favorite ones are D date, D date, D date as well. And then I have capital D date. Mm. So D date gets you 07 forward slash 25 forward slash 2015. Capital D the other date way. gets you 2014 dash 07 dash 025. Let me give some more like utilitarian ones. Okay. So I have one L O R I P S, lore ips. It oh, just has two oh, paragraphs yeah. of lorem ipsum, just for when you're doing demos and stuff, just to fill things out. Wait, I got one. Same thing. Okay. FM, FF, FFN1, FFN2, FFN3. Uh, fax number? Fake phone, phone number fake one. Fake phone number. Good one. No, so I put it in I have my real fake. phone numbers. AFN, Argus, Argus fax phone. number. Yep. Uh, AON, Argus office number. Things like that. Yep. CFN? Cell phone number? I have my cell, actually. Oh, okay. All one word, my CFN cell. Is... Um, tons of stuff. I mean, it's, it's just very useful. I have one called uh, CTLI. CTLI. Yeah. On that one. Click to log in. And what it does is it gives me the, for those of us who log into many, many URLs, but like to store sort of the username and the password in the URL so that when you click on it, it just sort of logs you right in. So if you store them as bookmarks or in documents somewhere. So the the uh, it has two fills, the username and the password. And the snippet is actually login.salesforce.com slash question mark UN equal fill, right? And yep. then another one, um, you know, question mark PW equal um, fill for the, for the password. Nice. And... CTLI um, actually brings that one up for me, which is a nice one. Um, I have so my most special one as we get towards the end, and we'll go over our quick hits here. My sp- most special one is my newest of my one, which is an Apple script. So I so you can even tell a command, then go do an Apple script. So this one I use for I, I sometimes I'm signing a lot of things on the end of the week and I need to tell people I usually say like have a great weekend or enjoy the weekend or whatever. So I have one called ETW, which is says enjoy the weekend, but it actually then goes into a folder with tons of them and it randomizes randomly picks one. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so in the folder I then have <laughs> In That's the folder, very funny. I have uh, enjoy the weekend. I have, have holiday, an exceptional weekend. I have weekend. holiday weekend. I have like some out of office ones that I change. Oh yeah, oh oh oh, that's things a great like that. one. So that's one you that one you change a lot. So yeah, again, it can be things changes. that you use a lot, and it can be things that you use once yeah. in a while. LMQ. Yep. Questions. Um, so those are so text expander. I swear, hit on your hit on your statistics and tell me how your stats. G L A S F D C. Grant me login access. Oh, how to good. do that? Yeah, we've done ones for the permissioner and I compliance have locker. TP URL. Yep. The permissioner URL. Um open your open your stats and tell me what your stats um, are. Um where do I find it? It's my in stats. Texas Band at the top says statistics. There's a button. I don't have that. Oh, I do have that. Yeah. There it is. Statistics. T- how many expanded? Three thousand three hundred and fifty one. Oh my god. What? Nineteen thousand four hundred wow, thirty. More than I do. <laughs> Characters saved. Uh about five hundred thousand. Oh. 718,000. So I must be doing much more. I've saved 31.81 hours at 50 words per minute. I've, yeah, at 65, which is my speed, I'm 36.84 hours. It's unbelievable. Again, great app. Buy Smile software. Just tweet my stats. It says tweet my yes, stats. I've done I'm it a couple do times. It. You should do it right now. Do it. Tweet it. Do it. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go quick hits while we wrap this one up. Um, again, no. Done. No, um, no picks because we just, so we'll throw in a bunch of picks. 
Um, my favorite FTP client in the world, talking about productivity, I use this all the time, Transmit. It is made by a company called Panic. I think it's 20 bucks. Unbelievable. I've picked it before. It's just the best FTP client. Every time someone's like, oh, I'm having trouble connecting, I'm like, I just go get Transmit, and it gets me through. It can do any kind of FTP um, ever. Uh, you have another one. Why don't you pick this one because you like this one. Which one? PDF Pen. Oh, it's made by the same people who make uh, Text Expander. Yeah. So Smile Software. So PDF Pen is kind of like taking Preview, which we talked about, to the next level. Yeah. So really going in and redoing a lot of stuff in PDFs. So you can find, replace words in PDFs. You can fix, you can basically change the words right. inside of a PDF. Right. Which full editing. Anyone, yeah, full editing of a PDF. So anyone who's tried to do that in the past will know that's no simple task. So PDF pen is kind of like your Swiss army knife for PDFs to re-edit them, uh, reorganize them, add logos, um, all sorts of fun stuff, add page numbers, yep. tons and tons and tons of, tons of features. I'm going to just do one little tiny little one. Um, for tweeting, I use TweetBot. Don't know why, but okay. I use TweetBot. And then I really like it. It's just small and easy and starts up quite fast and whatever. And then my other one, Hazel. Um, I love Hazel. It's a. It's almost too much to go into on this podcast, but just as a as, as a thought, here's what it can do. It's a app that sits there and can watch folders, and then as things happen, it can do stuff to those files in the folder. So, like, I have one that sits there and watches my desktop, and anytime a screenshot gets dropped to my desktop, it throws a copy into a folder. Mm -hmm. So if I delete it by mistake and I'm doing something, so it just throws the copy. It can do amazing stuff. I haven't even used it. It has the ability, I think I've even made it one of my picks once. It has the ability to read the doc, read into the document and like pick the date of the document and really? make it the name of the file. You know, I knew that we were doing this today. Yeah. There was something I was thinking of that I wish Siri could do. Which is what? Okay. So people have, I know we're cutting it close on time. People have all of this information in their emails yes in their signatures yes their phone number yes. their mobile phone their fax so true so someone had sent me an email and i really wanted to call them i didn't have their phone number in my phone in my contacts but i knew that i could either go into salesforce one and get it or i can open up the email that they had just sent me because i know it's in their signature i wish i could have just told siri and i hope that phones get this smart one day Open up the last email from this person. Find the phone number that says office phone and dial it. Yeah. I wish you could have done that for me. Or call person and they say, I don't find this person in your address book. Should I search your email? Yeah, go through my email and find it. I found however, it. However yeah. you have to do that workflow, just I want you to be able to do that. Very cool. For me. I was All just right. thinking about it on the way home. So there are a ton of these. I mean, we we love cha around Arcus. We love giving these to people. And we have docs where we say, here's all the stuff. There's tons for the Finder and for Max, whatever. If you have great ones, put them in the Cloud Focus Weekly um Which one did you just want group. from me? Huh? You wanted one from me. Which one did you want? Oh, I wanted the... Um, the Org ID one? Yeah, I'm gonna the Org send ID. That That's a good one. Send that to you um, right here. I will say you can save text expander and you can import them. So it's kind of nice. You should throw yours into a folder. Um, all right. So that's it for this week. We'll be back next week. We'll get back to some more Salesforce talk. We'll talk about chain sets. We have a new blog post coming up this week on blog.arcsync.com on wellness. Kind of interesting. A different topic for, for us. Um, and we will discuss Banner Be Gone. My favorite uh, summer 14 idea that's rocking the world. Maybe by next week it'll be even more. Um, and yeah, so we'll be back next week. Until then, as always, Justin, Jason, saying enjoy those cloudy days. Mm -hmm.